A lot of people want to ride in it even without being arrested. <laughs> so what was your workaround? Well, we don't have a workaround right now. My workaround is to talk to the Tesla engineers to see if they can't come up with some sort of software program that says, hey. So we got lucky. So um, the state actually had a grant. So this is going to be my radar unit. Um, so I do have radar on the car. So it'll catch traffic home in both directions. Yeah. My primary function is traffic. So as far as this car being utilized like that, it's perfect because Number one, I get to capture the craziest things that people do on the road that when everyone's driving around, they says, where's a cop? And then when they see the lights and siren go on, it's this car, they're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that was a cop. So this is Paul Brieran, and I'm here at the Hotel Marcel. EV so called the Connecticut event. It's funny because... And we're getting a... First you, look you go at somewhere Tesla and, Model y. and people with their little kids taking my son take a picture in the front seat of your car and I'm absolutely could take a picture but in this one the dads are like hey uh, can I get in your car and can you take a picture of me <laughs> so, you were just telling me a little bit about the money savings of the Model 3 that you had for how long now so the Model 3 um, it's been on the road for just about two and a half years yep. and like I said uh, we had initially estimated thirty five hundred dollars a year one in savings and after all the data was done uh, we kept all the data on Tesla Fi and gave a third party access to it to, to crunch the numbers. Yep. And it came back to close to an eight thousand dollar savings in year one alone. How wow. much per year? Eight thousand. It was seventy eight seventy eight hundred and change. Wow. Between between For the two and a half years total? That's one year. One year, one wow. Year. One yeah, year. wow. Actually I've run Testify in my car there, the Model Three. I've had seventy two thousand. Okay. Yeah, it's great. Automatically logging all your trips. Well because, well, because it's a lot of miles, right? Most of that's gas. Most most of it well. Yes, yes, a lot of it, a lot of that savings was gasoline, um, you know, 15 cents a kilowatt hour to charge this versus, you know, two dollars and at one point we were at almost four dollars for a gallon of gas. But we locked in at two dollars and 39 cents, I think, in the, the agreement that the town has with the gasoline provider. But even still, um, you know, you, you're talking about every normal car gets four oil changes a year. We're not doing that. Every normal car goes through two sets of tires every year. Our Teslas go through one. Brakes. Brakes, you know, and, and routine maintenance on the vehicles. We don't need to do any of that with these, you know? So it's uh, it, it was a great savings in the long run. And reliability? Very reliable. Winter, fine. Well, obviously, we've had a couple of uh, decent winters over the last two years, but even in the snow, the cars run great. Yeah. Is this four-wheel drive? Yes. Yes. Just get a few less miles out of your battery in the winter. This is true. You know, it, it, that, right? Things, yeah, things like you know, air conditioning, heat, the same thing. So, um, the Model Three is got the 310 mile range, but we're at we're we're estimating now after three years, it's about 280 miles range. Yeah. Okay. You know, this one is is supposed to be 270 miles an hour uh, mile range, but like I said, we're only doing 140 miles. Away a day so it'll come back in with 40 percent of the battery still in it, it depends on you like right right well, like the speed limit we drive more. the speed limit <laughs> not always. Not, not always. follow me home if you're, if, you're, if you're late going home for dinner i'm sure yeah i don't know about that sure you're not using speed, speed limit, limit. <laughs> yeah i'm on i'm on video hey <laughs> how are you sir it must be fun chasing uh, like a sports car because you could probably blow his doors off initially. Yeah, we don't we don't do a lot of chasing in them. Like yeah. I said, the, the state of Connecticut really limits what we can do. So, right. but but it is it, <laughs> it's a good idea for for you know sustainable vehicles that, that aren't going to cause a problem with the ecosystem. Yeah. And it, this is one of our great leaders over here. He's uh, hey, he's yeah. set up. He, he's done a lot of work for us and done a lot of help, a lot of uh, uh, crunching of the numbers to yeah, assist us, Barry. How long have you had the Y in the road? So this one went on the road January. Okay. How's it going? The same upfitters? Uh, was it Whalen is one of the companies? That... So so the upfitter is actually Fleet Auto Supply of West Haven. And they're on, uh, I, I think it's 775 Main Street or something over there. Um, but they use all Whalen products for the lighting. Uh, we use all Motorola for the cameras and the uh, radio system. Be okay to explain a little bit of what we're seeing? So in the back here, this 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 head actually con controls all your lighting. So um, it's tied into the car and it's tied into all the lights you see on the car. This 
is a modem that allows my computer to talk to the rest of the world. And you have a DVR, which uh, all cars in Connecticut as of July 1 were required to have uh, cameras in them in the front and officers wearing body worn cameras. And then just our radio system. Got it. Thank you. Underneath, you're using the space underneath for anything? I'm not using it for anything at all right now. Circular thing. What's that? Well, the original car was fifty-three thousand dollars. The upfit is is approximately fifteen thousand dollars to get that done, and that's all your equipment and the labor to, to install it. Right. So even though it's a little bit, if you think about it though, if I could get these cars for fifty-three thousand, I'm paying forty-seven thousand for a Ford SUV Explorer and putting the same fifteen thousand dollars worth of equipment in it. So it's it's only you know a six thousand dollar difference there. And in year one, when I'm saving eight thousand dollars, now I'm already two thousand dollars ahead. We have three. Yes, we have three level two chargers installed right now that we're utilizing. We have a we have a fleet of hybrid cars also. So we have uh, Toyota Priuses in our traffic um, agents, with the, the guys who give out the parking tickets. Uh, so we have two Toyota Priuses. We have a Honda Clarity. Uh, we have a hybrid SUV police explorer because we want to we want to try everything to see what the best fit is for the department. So we have uh, approximately right now seven. I think we just took a we just took uh, possession of a uh, all electric UTV four wheel drive uh, unit, and that'll be down at the beach all summer assisting on the beach. So that's our eighth electric slash hybrid type vehicle. Anybody get away from you yet? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Your Model 3 is more for uh, traffic enforcement. This one so, actually has a cage in the back. Correct. So They're this, differently, yeah. Yeah, the Model 3 does not have the equipment that this one has. This one has the prisoner partition in it. It has the computer in it. Uh, and the full console. The Model 3, we left the Model 3's console in it. We just outfitted it with a uh, removable computer, lights, siren, and a radio. Okay. This round thing here is an antenna of some sort? That's the antenna for the, for the modem. Yep, right there. And it's so, actually 10 antennas in one. It's okay, I peek in the back seat. I can open oh, yeah. the door. Okay, cool. Absolutely. So, no. No. Tesla's, we're still, still fighting with Tesla because <laughs> yeah. they won't. Uh, <laughs> They won't make the cameras in the car immediately available. So it's a 60 second delay on the cameras in the car. So until we can get them to change their software a little bit. It, they, I've been told it's still on the drawing board. It's just a matter of them you know, doing it. But the company has the software oh, written, fine. the software works. It's wow, just there's a, a 60 a second here. delay, which in our business doesn't, doesn't help us at all. So, no, not on this one. That's what we're trying to do still. So, things like the lights. So, I could keep this box here, but instead of having the yeah, control looks like panel it. on the console, I want to put that on the Wayland computer. So I mean, another, on the uh, sensor computer. there. So, I have Wayland engineers looking at that now. Um, Motorola, why can't I just press the button on the steering wheel and talk on the radio. Actually, the car so has ultrasound sensors here. Looks like they just moved them Tesla forward. Now to try to integrate so they don't bump into of stuff. Of Interesting. Equipment, so. State troopers do more chases. Do they have these cars as well? Well, see, there's a statewide policy. cameras there, as usual. Unless it meets the specific there. criteria, we're not allowed to chase anything. Really? Wow, there's yeah, so much so, equipment in here. So if it's a, you know, somebody goes into Home Depot and steals $10,000 worth of goodies and throws them in the back of his pickup truck and takes off and you try to stop them and they take off, you have to shut everything down and turn around and go the other way. Even if you murder somebody? Now, murder's different. So if it's an armed felon, that, uh, then, you, then you can uh, start chasing. <laughs> so the state police don't. They're still, they're still utilizing the Ford SUV. But all the lights and all this is eating up your battery. It does. It does. But it's not, It's not. Um, we haven't come across any major issues with it yet. The Model 3 gives me more headaches than this one. Uh, and, and it goes back to, um, so this will go 270 miles on a, on a full charge. We only use it for about 100, I would say 140 is tops in a, in a day. Oh, And that's 16 hours it's on the road. Was the electrical done similarly as the Model 3? There's some special collaboration with Tesla you did for the electrical. So, same, same with the Model Y? So, yes. So, the same thing. Um, 
we tapped into some of their sensors. So when you exit the driver's seat, the light bar, instead of being in a real quick flash mode, goes into what we into a safety mode. So it flashes a lot slower, so as not to uh, distract drivers that are approaching the vehicle. Um, so we've we've tapped into that. We've tapped into some of the tail lights for flashing. So instead of using the 12 volt up front. Actually, what year was this? They have the new 18 volt, the small battery uh, lithium instead of lead acid up front. Does this and have that? Yes, that's what we have. That has that, the newer one? Yes. Oh, cool. Yes. Are you able to pop your frunk or no? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Came on nice. A little steerable spotlight. That's a spotlight, yep. yeah. Yeah. And then it looks like you moved the ultrasound sensors to here. So we did. We had to take, so we, we, we found a, a few things that had to get done uh, in order to make this vehicle run. So yeah, bury one here and then we'll right. move forward. First was the, the sensors in the front. As soon as we put the push bar on, it said, oh my God, you can't move. There's a car in front of you. <laughs> uh, when Got we it. put the light bar on, uh, we didn't know anything about roof rack mode. <laughs> so <laughs> we had to find that because it said there's a tractor trailer parked on top of you and the car wouldn't move. So, but we found out through trial and tribulation, um, these these little oddities and actually Satina, when we bought the, the Satina push bar, it told us we had to move those sensors. So it showed you exactly how to do it and where to place them. It worked out very well. It's a typical police console. Um, turn my radio down. Typical police console. Uh, I can see your taste in music there. Yes. Any change in the software here from Tesla or just? Back? Just the headlights. So just the headlights turning off and on. It's the only tweak. That's the only tweak. Wow. Everything else is, is identical to a factory Tesla. This looks quite different than the Model 3. So Completely yes. different system. So we left, we left the original console in the Model 3. This is a um, Havis console built specifically for the Model Y. Allows us to mount the radio and the light control. And then we have the, uh, I'll be crashing it over there, but we have the Oh, nice. Yeah, with the front up. Yeah. Got it. Steerable. Uh, and then just this, this is where you would put the credit card, obviously, to get the car rolling. Yeah. Some cup holders so I can have my coffee before I get here. And then we have a full computer system in the vehicle. How do you deal with app access? Just a couple officers get access or you uh, share it? That's it, tricky, right? I don't, I don't, um, I don't limit anything. So. Okay. Use the key card, though, for some or people just use the app? No. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So I have, uh, I have only a few people that, that have the Tesla key on their phone. Uh, I have more officers that want to drive it than keys because you, you can only put six people on the key. Yeah. So, so there's a limit there. Right. So instead of people crying to me, I want it on my <laughs> phone and everybody getting upset, I limit it. So here you got a docking cradle for That's charging it. something. So that docking cradle is to charge our body worn cameras. When you uh, put it in this docking cradle, it actually syncs with the camera system that's in the vehicle. Okay, so this is just standard, what any Ford Explorer would have. Yes. This set of stuff. Yep. Any differences? Uh, really no. Oh, no. Everything, okay. everything is just fitted to a Tesla. So the idea of really leveraging the existing cameras, Tesla does, that's not really happening, it seems. It, uh, unfortunately, the Tesla cameras have a 60 second delay on them. So you can't access them in real time. Uh, it's a showstopper for what you need then. Right. So so, this camera then added. Right, that camera had to be added. Okay. Anything else to show you got? What's the system here? That's it's, all the lights. It's all the light systems, your your siren controls, and too many people standing there in the front. I want to get my heart yeah, attack. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and then, then you got I use button. this as so this is my main power on and off. And that so, did this something. Well, no, it actually will turn everything off for you. Okay. That way the battery doesn't die while I'm just sitting around. Testify, looking at the nerdy stats, the car's gotta like charge its 18 volt more often in your car than a normal car yes because of all this stuff running yes but it isn't that's good you got that battery how did the model 3 battery hold up is that lead acid died yet no, um, we, we, re we replaced the battery after two years there you um, go that doesn't the, surprise me yeah right the um the only problem i have with that and um once again working with the tesla engineers to try to get changed is in the good old cars when you when your oil went low you would get a warning light on your dashboard that says oil low yeah, you would sure. add a quart of oil to the car and the light would go out because now you have enough oil. Yep. Well, in the Tesla, in the Model 3 specifically, if your 12 volt battery drops below 12.3 volts, but yet it gets recharged and it goes above 12.3, that warning never goes away. Mm. So okay. that precludes you from doing software downloads onto the vehicle oh, when you have that warning. Interesting problem. It doesn't preclude you from driving it, but it does, it does stop the software downloads. So what was your workaround? Well, 
we don't have a workaround right now. My workaround is to talk to the Tesla engineers to see if they can't come up with some sort of software program that says, hey, put the warning on when the battery is low, turn the warning off when the battery is, is above the 12.3 volts. So we're still waiting on them to, to take a hold of that height there and help us out. <laughs> All right, you hear that, Tesla? And uh, I'm looking at how they did this. They ran the cable nicely. The roof rack, you had some aftermarket. The same company handled installing the roof rack? Yes. The light bar? They installed it. It's a, a Satina um, bracket, which hooks right into where you would put a normal roof rack onto uh, onto the vehicle. I can tell you that we went through two of these. Oh, uh, trying we cra to, they cracked the glass. Trying yeah. To, yeah, we cracked the glass twice. Oh, they're so, pioneers. Yeah, yeah we, went to, uh, we went to Tesla in Milford. Uh, when they took the old glass off, they gave us access to the vehicle so that we could actually see what the issue was. And we uh, modified the brackets for the roof rack, got it working, put the new glass on, put the light bar on. Nice. And as a matter of fact, I believe this is probably the first Model Y with the mounted light bar in the United States. Ooh, so okay. I've this... seen them on the Model S, but that comes with a, with a metal roof. So it was easier to drill, where this one, you only have the rail you have to go through. Gotcha. So... Um, it, it was a challenge, but we, we did overcome the obstacles, and now this is one of the first. When you're wearing, uh, I guess I'm down to last two questions. Ergonomics, this higher seat and having, you know, uh, equipment around your belt. How's so, this car going compared to the Model 3? So this, it, it's little actually one. going well. The only little secret is we bought a, uh, a seatbelt uh, yeah. extender. So now you can reach it with all your gear on. Right. Oh, nice. So, it's, so it makes it a lot easier for us to, to plug in Interesting. every time we get into the vehicle. And was it difficult to find a company to do this cage in the back? Or uh, you call it a, uh, sorry, divider? It's a, it's a partition. Partition, thank you. Um, so, no, the cage was uh, built by Satina. It's like a roll bar. Yeah, and installed by same same people, the Fleet Auto Supply over in West Haven. How's the ergonomics compared to like a Ford Explorer of using the computer here, the keyboard? I mean, it's, it's a little tighter than a Ford Explorer. Ford Explorer gives you a little bit more room. But then again, the um, console in a Ford Explorer is also a lot wider than this one. So okay. there's there's pluses and minuses to both. This one you've this lost one all, works well. You lost all storage under here because there's so many electronics. Correct. Yeah, yeah, got it. Oh, air conditioner still blows fine and everything works. Yeah. It's interesting the back seat ends up being hard plastic and oh. down low. So even the tallest person could absolutely fit in there. And I don't know, I'm just curious. What's that? Uh, GPS. Thing? It's a GPS An antenna. Extra antenna, okay. Yeah, it looks like you added extra tin in here and here. Yes, this has been wrapped on the top to keep the light out. All right, well, thank you so much for this detail tour. I really appreciate it. I know a ton of people here have questions for you. And Not this a is problem. awesome. We can show the world this video. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Very clean. The is also going to be playing here, too, at uh, just after this. So, once again, thank you all for coming. Yeah, that's perfect. And we've got Rivian, Chevy Bolt, Model 3, the Rocky Hill Green Expo, you'll we'll see. And this is my first time seeing the Ford Mustang Mach-E. There's two of them in Weatherfield, and you're the second police force in Connecticut. Yes. This, an EV, correct? Yes, that is correct. Westport being the first. This is the most subtle police EV I've seen. So what is its role, this particular car? Do you get so, to drive it much yourself? Yeah, so I'm the only one that drives this one at the moment. Um, so I, my assignment at the moment, so I run the traffic unit in Weathersfield. Um, so my primary focus is all the hazardous activity that we have going on in town, whether it be speed, um, cell phones, stop signs, all that kind of stuff. So having this car and being so sleek and um, obviously with no graphics and stuff like that, I'm able to catch a lot more than the typical officer would be able to with, with a marked car. How many months have you been driving it? Uh, I think I've been driving it now about seven months, six months. Yeah, seven, six months right in that ballpark. Okay, so how'd winter go when you're just idling, running the heat? Your range has been quite good for a whole shift? Yes, so yeah, okay. um, cool. for a while before, we, when we first got these cars, we had the cars and we had no chargers. So charging was an issue for a while. What we were doing was I was shuttling back and forth between like uh, Department of Motor Vehicles has a charger. So like when I wasn't working, I'd plug the car in there and have to get shuttled back and forth and stuff like that. Yeah, I leave it there for about six hours and it yeah. charged me back up. Uh, but now with the chargers at the station that we got, we have two chargers put in. Um, it's actually much easier. As soon as I end my shift, I plug it in and it charges back up. Um, typically right now in the summertime with the windows down and stuff like that, I'm only using maybe 20, 25% of shift, oh, nice. um, which is nice. Cause obviously with the windows down with the AC going and all that stuff, then it's going to draw a little bit more. Um, the winter was very interesting cause when I had the heat going, 
Obviously, I have a heated steering wheel and heated seats. Not many cops get to have that, so when I have that perk, I'm going to use it. Obviously. Um, so, uh, with the heated seat going and all that stuff, it drew a lot of uh, energy from the car. Um, uh, okay. I, it, it probably doubled like 50%. That's how much uh, battery I actually used up during the winter time. All right. um, but as far as the car driving in the actual winter, it was it was just like a regular Taurus um, uh, show. Level? All wheel drive, right? Yep, all wheel yep. drive. Yep. So it's the the GT. And it's a used model, both of them, both the Maquis you got. Yes. Yeah, so they got them, I think, because during that time when we purchased these, there weren't many around, and they were hard to find. Um, so the ones that we did find, we grabbed them as quick as we could, and then we outfitted them as quick as possible because the outfitting was actually what took the longest. Not to get too into it, but the detail. Oh, we've got some music on. The financials. How did this work out? I mean, people always look at. You know, yep. So a lot. Yeah, a lot of people had questions about whether it was taxpayer dollars and all that stuff. But actually, this was purchased with asset forfeiture. So Chief Medina um, was able to use those funds and get us new things, so we could actually try this in T and E to see if we could get more or if we could get any other options and stuff like that um, for the PD. So that was an excellent perk that we got was using asset forfeiture. So asset forfeiture is just stuff that we got um, from. You know, we have an officer in the DEA and he's able to uh, bring monetary value back to the PD after his cases are solved and all that. And then once those get uh, adjudicated, then we get to use the money and buy stuff like this so we can use it back at the PD. Okay, but I imagine you're still looking at the uh, operational cost and how it's compared to a gas car. Correct. For the long term, this is kind of a pilot project. To Correct. Keep your toes in, right? Yep, absolutely. All right, and then of course there's a the charging uh, outdoor cost of installing those chargers mm -hmm. so that cost a little something but probably not too bad it's right uh down. yeah it wasn't too bad so we got lucky so um the state actually had a grant so being um a town facility um there was a state grant out there to put chargers so we were able to utilize that so i'm not sure exactly the financials how that all went down that's above my pay grade yeah, yeah. all that stuff breaks down um but we did get a little break putting the chargers in at the pds which was nice Okay, cool. And let's get nerdy and inside where uh, yeah, for sure. we'll be able to hear better without the music and the wind noise. But uh, anything you want to highlight on the outside? So who, who outfitted this? Was it that New Haven company that does police cars? Um, the lights and all that? No, so it was a company that we use. I believe they are... Honestly, I can't remember the town that they're it's, out of. It's okay. It's a Connecticut company. Yeah, it was a Connecticut company. Yep, cool. they outfitted it. So this was the first one they actually did in the States. So this is going to be my radar unit. Uh -huh. um, so I do have radar on the car, so it'll catch traffic coming in both directions. Um, oh, really? Yep. Where's the other? It's, it goes both ways. Yeah, it'll go both ways. So it'll catch traffic going this way or that way. Yeah. And you went subtle, meaning inside, so there's no wind resistance issues here. Or range Correct. Protection. Yep. Nothing notable. And then the role of this car, would they ever expand it to night shift now that they know the range can easily handle it? Maybe two officers? Um, so this car, it definitely drives different than a regular police cruiser. So the last thing we want to do is put an officer in this car because it does drive completely different than a regular gas car with uh, okay. the regen braking and the, the, how fast it is, the torque and all that. Yeah. Um, so we don't want to just throw people into the car without actually getting some training in it. Um, so that's one of the things that we're working on right now is getting a training program put together so more officers feel more comfortable driving this car. Okay, cool. Let's hop inside. I'll go to the Doors are interesting here. Oh my, that's a lot of equipment. This is, this is impressive. What on earth is this? <laughs> What's that? Right here. This is a tent. So that is going to be um, my radio unit. So when the radio gets broadcasted through, um, that's the speaker that it's actually going to play through. Here's the head end. Okay. So right here is actually going to be all where my sirens are. So this was actually one of the more trickier things to figure out in this car because usually the police units have like a big square block. So this right here is actually like a handheld unit so I could grab it and I can uh, do all the different tones and stuff like that that I need to do. So um, this will activate all my lights. Um, I got just front flash if I need it, rear flash, um, horns and stuff like that if I need it. Um, different sirens, um, takedown. So the takedown is what I utilize at night so that way it cuts down the blinding um, on the cars that I have stopped at nighttime. Is there any um, annoyance when these things are on? Does it reflect off the windshield nope, at all? Nope, it doesn't either? reflect at all. So these are actually nice and hidden. So the good thing is they put the, state, the newest state-of-the-art equipment they did have in here. So it is very flat and it is very flush. So they did a good job putting those in and kind of outfitting it to make sure that it wasn't in the way. Looks like a different company for a rear a camera. So yes, yeah, so, so this right here is our watch guard system. So our watch guard system is our body cam. So anytime oh. any uh, I interact with anyone in the public, it always gets recorded. Um, so I have a body cam on, this will capture that as well and they both sync together. So that way, a lot of times this will capture before the incident and then um, the body cam will capture during the incident. So all that stuff's recorded and saved into our cloud.
What's this microphone doing? So that microphone there, so there's a feature in the radio system that I have where I don't need to click the radio. Uh -huh. um, as long as I hold this down here, I don't have to pick up the mic. This will actually pick up my voice. This one right here? Yep. Okay. So I don't have to take that off. I can just click it down here like this if I was just being subtle. And I could talk into that. <clears throat> Okay, cool. And then working our way over to here and here. So what are we looking at here? So this right here is going to be my radar unit. Ah, front rear. So a simple toggle or it shows you both? Yep, so I got a toggle through. Um, that remote's going to be in the back. So like I said, it's picking up cars, traveling here at 12 miles an hour. Um, okay, cool. And this? That's going to be the camera that um, the watch guard is connected to. So that, that right there is going to capture all that. So if you're watching this and you know the nerdy stuff there, I'm also doing a video about the Tesla Model Y that Westport, Connecticut just updated. Quite different. I think the computer might be similar. I'm not sure if police departments in the state all use different gear, but yeah. So, so this makes this guy. Uh, okay. Yeah. How's this been? Standard police issue you're used to using this? Yep. So no the difference? nice thing is, so this was actually, I was able to move everything so that way I could uh, get to it easier. So obviously when I'm working here, so that way my, my back's not slouch and all that stuff. So it makes sure. it a lot easier for me. Generally, most of the time, how this works is where you're sitting right now is actually where my duty bag gets kept. Um, so that's where all my stuff is as far as like all my paperwork, um, all my files and stuff like that that I need for the job and daily stuff. And usually there's probably nobody sitting in this seat? No, generally not. Same with the back seat too? Okay. Same with the back seat, yeah. So it's generally just one man show in this car. So the upfitting here, not necessarily permanent like the way the radar is, right? They didn't bother to tuck the wires. This is, again, experiment, right? So Correct. Prototype. Yep. Correct, yep. But pretty refined you got side lights there so they're like laws and regulations to call a police vehicle you have to have a certain number of lights and all um just your front and rears you know they just have to have a siren as well so in order to be considered an emergency motor vehicle you got to have lights and sirens got it mm -hmm. do different officers move this or does it just stay fixed that stays fixed just like that the laptop can come out if i need to take it out so like let's say if i need to go inside and take care of something but i need some work on the computer i can actually pop the computer out of this and go inside and take care of business and then just pop it back in Okay, got it. And then as far as, I don't know, uh, Blue Cruise, lane centering, none of that highway stuff's really relevant for around town enforcement stuff. You know, it's <laughs> it's funny you say that because um, my chief was the first one to kind of tell me that that's what that button was. I've sure. never I've never used it before. Um, obviously, I drive mostly in the town, um, not too much on the highways, so I've never actually used those, uh, the self-drive, all that stuff. Okay. Um, Any other tech stuff we didn't kind of cover here? I think we pretty much got it. Um, like I said, just the radio unit, the light sirens. How about seat comfort? Because you um, have driven a Model 3, you actually own one. So how would you compare the experience, comfort, side view mirrors, all of it? Like, how do you feel about the car in general? So I think that this car, it feels like a, a car versus, you know, the Teslas. It feels very um, futuristic. So this feels like a, like a, like a um, I mean, it's American made. So it's, it feels like a regular car. So it is very comfortable. The seats are nice. Um, like I said, I've got the heated seat feature on here with the dual, the suede and the leather on it, so it is very comfortable. Um, and to be honest, it's, it's holding up pretty well with all my gear on that I wear in here in New Murray. So obviously I have my vest on, my outer carrier, my duty belt and all that stuff. So that was one of the things I was worried about was going to damage the seat with all that stuff getting in and out, but it's actually held up pretty well. And I think Westport had the same concerns with the Model 3 a little tighter. Yeah. This is sort of between Model 3 and Model Y size mm -hmm. maybe. Does it feel a little bigger with the hip range and all for the Model It does. 3? It feels a little, a little yeah. yeah, it feels a little bit wider, especially for the sitting and purposes and being comfortable. Um, but it is it is very comfortable. Cool. Cool. I think this is a very really useful footage for some other police department kind of thinking about this, right? Yeah, absolutely. You are absolutely a, a pioneer way to be. You have 168 towns in the state and you're only the second doing this. Absolutely. A whole lot of the rest of the country has gone that way, especially like South California, mm -hmm. but kind of a big deal. You know, we have a way to share this with people and see that for you as an officer, it's really not, there's no training here. This is all stuff you're used to. Well, this Correct. screen's new, but frankly, that's just a fancy GPS. Most of the time you're just cruising around, not even using that feature probably. Correct. It is nice though, knowing like all the side streets and all that little stuff that if I'm in an area that I'm not familiar with or something like that, or if we go into an, uh, a city like Hartford, or we go into Newington, where I'm not familiar with the streets as well as Weathersfield. Yeah, I can't just look at this and be like, "All right, I know exactly where I am. I know exactly I'm going south on, you know, uh, Cedar Street, or you know, all that." So it does make it a lot easier. All right, and uh, I have a piece of musical taste. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, yes. It, when you uh, the stealthy aspect, I guess I'll close with that question. What do you think? Is there scenarios where that's useful? Maybe not quite the role your car is in right now. Um, right. So as far as like being um, kind of quiet um, for the outdoor person walking around. Yep. So yeah. my primary function is traffic. So as far as this car being utilized like that, it's perfect because number one, I get to capture the most craziest things that people do on the road that when everyone's driving around, this is where's a cop. 
And then when they see the lights and siren go on in this car, they're like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that was a cop. That's the best part about it. So you really catch the hazardous activity. You catch all those road rage incidents and all that. Like the other day, the perfect example was I was just sitting, running radar, and right in front of me, there's two cars racing on Jordan Lane. I was able to catch that. Yeah. And you managed to catch up with them yep. safely and quickly. They quickly knew they were nabbed. They had no so idea it was a cop car coming behind until them. Until the lights. Correct. But because you can accelerate and get on their tail fast enough, they yep. know this is over. Yes. Public safety, right? Absolutely. So for, an, for a roll, that's where you see the power of the EV8s. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'd have an enormous V8, which is idling a lot of the time. Correct. So, you so from a taxpayer perspective, right, you can get it. Like, yeah. Someone watching this video, just appealing to logic, cost per year, brakes, you've got regen going, so you barely need brake maintenance. Correct. You probably make it to 80 or 100,000, but before you even need to do the brakes. So yeah, that's the goal. Those things matter, because you mm -hmm. guys, you know, you see uh, those cars get beat on a bit. Yeah, like, around town driving stuff. Yeah, like cars. I said, this car gets driven, it gets it gets driven pretty well. Um, like I said, a lot of times, pulling off, obviously, at uh, zero, from zero to 60, it is much different driving this compared to, like, the Ford um, Explorers that we're typically used to driving. Do you know the number? Low threes, right? Yeah, it is low threes, yes. Similar to my, uh, Model 3 Performance that you've driven? Yes, it is very similar. Similar experience, yeah? Yep, very similar. Okay. And now when you're doing around town enforcement, you're not really getting top speed, but this car will start the thermal throttle and yep. pull back the horsepower if you hit it hard for too Correct. long, right? Correct. Yep. That doesn't affect you in any meaningful way, probably, with a town where most of the speed limit's 35. Correct. No, no. Exactly. Not okay. Sure. And you are at 4,700 miles, so... It's really not that high miles. No, I think when I got it, it had very, very low miles. I want to say it had maybe a couple hundred, 200. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so someone must have got this and just traded it in right away. Right. But it was also during that time period where people were buying these for MSRP and selling them for above MSRP. 61%. You guys charge for like 80% for daily driving or 100? Yep, or? so I usually keep it about 85 to 90%. All right, well, the public is knocking. We're going to open the windows and have people tour the cars. The music uh, starts and the show kicks off. So thank you so much for your time. Really thank appreciate you. it. That was of awesome. Of course. Thank you.